Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about William James and functionalism. So, William James might actually sound familiar. He was the first truly famous American psychologist, but he trained as a medical doctor. Growing up, he had a lot of medical problems um, with his side and with his skin, and he spent a lot of his early adulthood suffering from depression and suicidal thoughts. While we tend to think of people from this area looking a lot like how he looked when he was older, um, with the beard and the grizzled and the whole thing. Hmm. William James spent his early 20s in Brazil looking more like this. He went on a trip navigating the Amazon River where he caught smallpox, but luckily he was already studying to be a doctor. When he got his degree though, he never practiced medicine. Instead, he got married and <laughs> traveled through Europe, eventually ending up in Germany, where he started studying philosophy. He joked later in his life that the first lecture on psychology he ever heard was one that he gave. William James suffered with this kind of inferiority and depression for the rest of his life. And unfortunately, his own family considered him to be the unsuccessful child. His sister was feminist figure and author Alice James, and his brother was author Henry James, who wrote The Wings of the Dove and The Turn of the Screw, and was nominated twice for the Nobel Prize in Literature. When he was a teenager, William James read On the Origin of Species and was heavily influenced by the ideas of Charles Darwin. Much like Darwin, William James thought that organisms change and adapt to their environment. And for James, this also included an organism's behavior. This concept came to be called functionalism because it's based on the function of your behavior. That the behavior has to have some sort of adaptive significance or it won't necessarily help you survive, reproduce, and then be able to pass on that behavior to the next generation. For example, a lot of social behaviors can really be explained by functionalism. Like say any animal that usually travels in large groups, uh, like zebras or fish, or the huge flocks of grackles that we have here in San Antonio. Yeah. These birds out here are on crack. I don't think this one is okay. These birds are cracked out. The behavior of traveling around together has helped the ancestors of these animals survive, thrive, and reproduce, and pass on that social behavior to their children. According to functionalism, that behavior of being social and remaining in the safety of these large groups has an adaptive significance and will continue to be passed down. But scientists from all areas have some pretty strong criticisms of functionalism. For starters, it can be really hard to experimentally prove the evolutionary significance of a behavior in a controlled laboratory setting. While it can be done, um, James just didn't really focus on gathering data experimentally. And therefore, functionalism has been relegated to more of a thought process or a philosophy rather than a scientifically observable concept. Wilhelm Wundt, another famous psychology and contemporary of William James, actually wrote off functionalism entirely, saying that William James's book on functionalism was good literature and not much else. He really gave it no scientific weight at all. That doesn't mean that functionalism wasn't important, however. Today we know that certain things certainly did derive from the help of our ancestors all along the way. But 
If you want to know more about William James's rival, Wilhelm Wundt, check out our videos that we'll list down below. Or if you want to see our latest video, click right here. Until then, keep thinking, and we'll see y'all later. Bye. So he created all this, and he's still not his parents' favorite kid. Yeah. No, too, too, too close to home, too close to home. Yeah.